If I were to single out two works in this exhibition that really set the tone for the whole show, it would be this sculpture by Henry Moore and the triptych that you see in the, on the wall of the far room by Francis Bacon. Both were created um, at the end of the Second World War or just after it. Both uh, reimagine the human body for the post-war world. We look at the H Henry Moore sculpture, which is in the AGO's collection. It's one of Moore's unquestioned masterpieces. It's called Reclining Figure. It was given the nickname Festival Reclining Figure because it was actually a commission for the Festival of Britain in 1951. What does this figure say really about this brave new world that, that, that Britain and Europe was entering after so many years of, of war and, and destruction and death? It's, in my view, by no means uh, um, an, an encouraging, optimistic, positive image of humanity. Most of Henry Moore's reclining figures are women. Many of them have, in the public consciousness, are seen as being rather maternal, comforting uh, sculptures. There's nothing, in my view, maternal about this. This is a, a kind of tense, wary, alert, reclining woman that is more suited to the to the, the kind of nuclear age, the atomic age, the Cold War period that Europe was, was <clears throat> now entering. Look at her head, for example. It's more like some scooped out trap or hollow. It's, it's something that's, you know, it's, it's, it's more dangerous, it's more aggressive, I think, than, than anything that one might normally think of. The body itself, the torso, is at its most skeletal. This is the very first sculpture in, in which Moore actually opens out physical volume to the surrounding space. So the idea is you read the empty space, the voids, as, as much as you do the solid. So the, it's where space kind of interpenetrates and becomes part of the sculpture. It's bony. There's hardly any kind of sense of, of flesh on this body at all. Obviously the, the images that Moore and other artists, Bacon included, had seen coming out of Germany after the end of the war, the, at the time of the Nuremberg trials of Nazi war criminals, of the atrocities that had taken place in Europe, were very much uppermost in their minds. During the Blitz, Moore had been an official war artist and had gone down into the London Underground to draw the people who were sheltering there every night, men, women and children, from the inc incessant bombing of London that took place night after night for four months. And indeed, Moore himself had, had fought in the First World War, so he had seen destruction, death, violence, at first hand. And I think all those things are in the background of this really extraordinary sculpture.